Hi folks, I have a really quick set of slides on telescopes, the types of telescopes and the parameters that are important for telescopes. Um, I just want to say that we're going to talk about a couple of different types of telescopes, we're going to talk about the characteristics and parameters of telescopes, and then a little bit about the future of telescopes. So let's, uh, let's start with the types of telescopes. Remember the transparency of the atmosphere varies tremendously with wavelength. There are two windows of visibility where you can actually see through the Earth's atmosphere very clearly. The first is the visual window which happens to align very well with the uh, visible spectrum, the spectrum of light that the human eye can perceive. There's another uh, window called the radio window that corresponds to radio wavelengths. There are uh, two telescopes that are designed to work in the visible spectrum. There's the so-called refractor, which has a primary lens, an objective lens, with a long focal length, and an eyepiece lens with a short focal length. It turns out the trick is to make the focal length of the eyepiece plus the focal length of the primary lens equal to the distance between those two guys. In the picture you can see the focal point behind the primary lens is that place where the light all comes to a point. The focal point in front of the eyepiece is the, is the same point, and the focal length of each lens is simply the distance between the focal point and the lens. So the magnification of a lens, of a telescope, turns out to be the ratio of those two focal lengths. So the degree, the number of times longer the focal length of the objective is, then the focal length of the eyepiece is equal to the magnification. So the other kind of uh, telescope that was developed to primarily work in the visible spectrum is a, a reflector. It Instead of having a primary lens, it has a primary mirror. So the primary objective is a reflecting surface rather than a refracting surface. Reflection, of course, is when light bounces off something. Refraction is when light bends as it traverses an object. And, uh, but basically the idea is the same. The nice thing about a mirror is that it can fold a light path and make it uh, fit into a smaller space, so reflectors tend to be less uh, voluminous. They don't take up as much space. They're not as cumbersome to move around. Um, they tend to be lighter and shorter than the corresponding refracting uh, multi-lens telescope. The other thing is they don't suffer from something called chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is due to the fact that light of different wavelengths refracts to different degrees. So the primary lens focal length is different for red light than it is for blue light, for example. And so you end up with images that are uh, sharp in one wavelength and fuzzy in a different wavelength. Whereas with a mirror, everything reflects the same, and so all the different wavelengths reflect the same, and so you avoid that particular problem. Now, if you want to do radio, if you want to use the radio window with a telescope that's on the Earth's surface, <coughs> you end up having to build something rather larger. This is a radio telescope. The main issues are, are two. The wavelength is much longer for radio waves, so to get um, the resolution that you'd like, you need something much, much larger. And uh, the other problem is, of course, things tend to scale with wavelength, and so if you have a much larger wavelength, you end up needing a much larger telescope. So that's a simple way to look at it anyway. On the other hand, if you want to look at uh, light that doesn't make it to the Earth's surface, you're going to have to either put something in orbit around the Earth or in the neighborhood of the Earth, or you're going to have to fly a telescope in a, an airplane that can get well above the ap most of the atmosphere. So there's an IR telescope that flies on a plane, and there are also infrared, X-ray, ultraviolet, gamma-ray telescopes that live in orbit around the Earth in order to uh, avoid the atmosphere, which would otherwise absorb all the light they're interested in. Okay, let's look at the main characteristics of telescopes. There are three characteristics we're going to focus on. The first one is resolution. We already talked about that in the Facts of Light uh, slides. The resolution has to do with the wavelength of the light and the diameter of the primary objective. You can see that as the diameter gets larger, the resolution gets smaller, which is good. Small resolution means you can resolve things that are close together in the sky. 
um, but a small diameter is poor resolution. And of course, it's all relative to the wavelength. So to get the same resolution in a radio telescope that you'd have in a vis visual light telescope, you need a much, much larger diameter. Light gathering power is simply a measure of the size of the bucket. It turns out the bucket's area is the important quantity. So the light gathering power goes like the diameter of the telescope squared. So if you have a telescope that's 10 times the diameter, it'll have 100 times the light gathering power. And finally, the magnification I already spoke about has to do with the focal length of the objective element and the eyepiece element. So whether it's a mirror or a lens, doesn't really matter. It's the focal length of the objective divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. And that's the idea. I just want to add one more thing about the future of astronomy and telescopes. Uh, up until a couple of years ago, the only telescopes that had ever been used to measure events occurring outside the Earth's environment used electromagnetic radiation to detect these events. But starting last year, in fact at the end of 2015, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which is a collaborative effort of multiple institutions, measured gravitational waves from an extraterrestrial source for the first time. This is very exciting because what it means is it's a whole new kind of astronomy where we can use gravitational waves to detect occurrences outside the galaxy, outside the solar system, outside the Earth. And uh, it's very exciting. I don't know what to tell you. Um, stay tuned. I think it's going to bring all kinds of new, interesting insights into the operation of our universe. And if you're interested, you can go to the LIGO website. But I didn't want to leave off a discussion, a discussion of telescopes without bringing this guy up. All right.